Hello and welcome to this special series of Ingram Micro's B2B Tech Talk podcast, Coffee with Women in Tech, with your host, Harpreet. This is a show where incredible women in technology share their stories and successes. Why should a woman consider a career in tech? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this series, where you'll learn why tech is just the place to be for women. This is so exciting, my first podcast. Wow, I almost feel privileged you're, you're gonna have your first podcast with me. <laughs> Either that or it'll be more editing for you to do, I'm not sure yet. Well, let's say cheers to uh, Coffee with Women in Tech. Yeah, cheers. Thanks so much for having me. This is awesome. And I got a nice, fresh, hot cup of Tim Hortons for my friends in Buffalo here. So hi, everyone. I'm Harpreet Narang, and welcome to Coffee with Women in Tech podcast. Today, I have with me Cheryl Rank, Director of Advanced Solutions, Ingram Micro, who recently joined CRN's 2020 list of 100 rising female stars. Hi, Cheryl. How are you? Hi, doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Really excited to have you here. Well, Cheryl, congratulations on making it to CRN's very exclusive 2020 list for the second time, because you were on the 2019 list as well, weren't you? Yeah, for the women of the channel, this has been uh, an amazing, amazing opportunity with Ingram Micro, and I'm so appreciative of the recognition. It's a, an amazing company and an amazing honor to be included on a list of such such rising females and uh, a lot of mentors that I look up to. So let's start at the beginning. Let's let's uh, talk us through your wonderful career journey so far. Did you always plan to be in the technology industry? No, actually, my degree was in finance, and I really thought I would go more towards the banking route. But what I realized is that as I was growing in my career with Ingram Micro, finance is all around us, and being able to have that skill and have the financial acumen to talk to partners and vendors has really been a differentiator for me. And I can still use that skill of numbers that I really enjoy. So you became director of advanced solutions to oversee Ingram Micro's award-winning 40 person US IBM team when you were six and a half months pregnant. Yeah, I can thank Ingram Micro for uh, going into early labor with my first child. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a fascinating story. Tell us more about that. Yeah, it was. Well, I will tell you, I was not expecting it. Um, I was I, I always knew that I wanted to get in a leadership role with Ingram. I valued the the opportunities that I had had to lead in different roles throughout my career in sales and in vendor management. But moving into more of that P&L management and leading associates was something that I was very passionate about. So when the opportunity came knocking, and I'm very grateful for uh, leaders like Tim Ament and Scott Zoll that had faith in me to be able to do the role um, and not concerned about the time frame of me going out on maternity leave for a couple months was uh, was something I'm very grateful for. And, and it's been a great career so far and an opportunity with IBM and continuing to expand. It absolutely has been, hasn't it? It has. You know, I, I taking over a role like that, six and a half months pregnant, I don't know why I decided to add so much stress onto my life as if there wasn't enough going on. But I also think that the timing was kind of perfect because it gave me a sense of um, appreciation for the company and the culture that they were driving, that that wasn't a, a hindrance, right? They could have easily looked over and said, now she's going to be going out on maternity leave. This isn't a good bet to place now. And, and we could put her on the back burner, but they didn't. They had the confidence in, in me and my ability to take over a role um, in upper management, which was, was very, uh, it gave me a sense of confidence, which I appreciate. And that's brilliant. That That's a huge testament for, you know, um, how a supportive organization can make a world of difference. Yeah, you know, stories like that. Career. Yeah, you don't hear stories like that. And I think especially with with women in technology or just women in business in general, a lot of times, you know, you, you find out that you're going to be expanding your family or you have a, a family change going on and you think this is going to be a hindrance to your career. And, you know, you may get overlooked for opportunities or for um, ways to advance either yourself uh, in business or just in your knowledge base. And the fact that Ingram was the polar opposite and looked at it as um, not 
a hindrance, but maybe a way that my skill set was going to continue to evolve and my passion for the business continue to change and drive forward, that they were very accepting and and very gracious with the uh, work-life balance that I needed in the beginning to raise small children. That's amazing. So what have been some of your challenges, uh, you know, and, and how have you gone about overcoming these? Yeah, I think some of the, one of the biggest challenges that I had when I moved into the role was I didn't have direct management experience, but I think ways to overcome it was to leverage the opportunities that I had been given to be in a leadership role. So being able to help coach associates and mentor teammates and use the the mentors that I had in in Ingram world, both internally and externally, was something that I think had had made that challenge a little bit easier to overcome. Um, so I highly encourage you know people to look at their skill set and not look at direct experiences as ways to define what your future path is going to look like, but how you can get the same uh, or similar experiences within your current role, like leadership and, and management tie hand in hand together. So as I mentioned, I've got two young kids, you know, three and one and a half. And this this pandemic has definitely been eye opening for the challenges that women can have and, and will have for the foreseeable future around um, working and raising young children while they may be home for school or home for a period of time. And uh, some of the advice I think that I would have to them is is really just ask for help. And just because you're the woman and you're the mom, and I know kids always want their mom, there's other people that you can lean on to help you. And don't be afraid to ask for it because you can't do everything yourself, even though sometimes it feels like you should. Mm. And stay motivated despite those challenges. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we talk about... Um, female workforce and technology, which is only 25%. So what stereotypes in this industry would you like to get rid of? Because there must be some barriers, you know, including the mindset if women aren't even considering uh, a career in tech consciously. Yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest stereotype is that you need to be technical to be in technology. And that's not true, right? You don't need to know why a, a phone runs the way that it runs but you can look at it and understand the functionality and how that can impact not just one person or one company, but a whole generation. So I think of a cell phone as a very basic example. I couldn't tell you the coding that goes into a phone. I never have taken coding, um, but I can tell you that, that the use of mobility and the expansion of cell phones and tablets and laptops is creating a wave of technology change throughout our industry. And we're in a, a unique position to be able to help partners through that change. So don't think that you need to be a technologist to be in technology. And that's very true. I think very few of us are proper like techie, techie, and we, we are still part of technology in, in various disciplines. So that's very Absolutely. true. And, and that's where you just got to find people who are and surround yourself with people, people that are smarter than you. So when I do have a question, I feel very confident in my network to be able to pick up the phone and ask them to explain how it works. Yeah, and that brings us to another point is networking. So you know, how, how important do you think is networking? I mean, not just in technology, but generally speaking in your, you know, developing a strong career path. Oh, absolutely. Networking is huge. I actually think that that's one of the more important pieces of any role that you have in, in your life, because being able to leverage your network and find people, it not only creates a personal connection, but it also creates a business connection. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of social media platforms like LinkedIn. Um, I think that being able to walk down the hallways when we were able to walk down the hallways and meet new people and see new faces is just a way to make yourself more approachable. And it's also a way to make sure that people around you know what you're looking for in your career and people want to help. I, I love helping associates when that they want to come to me for advice. And I know that that door has always been open on the other side and having that network to be able to reach out and call someone for assistance when you need it is a, a very gratifying way to connect both ways. 
So, you know, we, we talk about diversity, uh, you know, and how diversity is kind of essential for high functioning teams. What, in your opinion, can be done more of to kind of encourage more women to to be part of uh, this industry? It, I think it starts with making sure that our young females, so at school ages and moving through, uh, I don't know if it starts with my own daughter as an example, she's only 18 months, but she can figure out how to turn on an iPad and how to pick a baby shark video <laughs> on YouTube. And I think encouraging that self motivation and that they can be a part of technology and understand where they have a place, I think is just something that we need to continue to educate children on. So making sure that they have the same opportunities if they don't have an iPad, how do you get technology still in front in front of them at a young age where it strikes some curiosity and they recognize that there is a pathway to them to get into this this field? Exactly. And kids these days, I mean, they're born with phones in their hands. So it's oh, uh, it, it's unbelievable. It's it really is how quickly they learn how to exactly. swipe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Even before they've started talking, they can use it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, she doesn't talk, but she knows how to work a, a tablet already. It's ridiculous. Yes. And I think the role um, organizations play, you know, like, for example, you know, supporting women, uh, as, as in your example, to more leadership roles and celebrating women in technology, you know, like the, the CRN 2020 list. These are all ways of kind of, you know, encouraging women to grow their careers within this industry so that they stay in this industry. Absolutely. I mean, we can't we're not going to get there each individually. We have to get there together. So the more as you rise, you pull someone up with you is the way that we're going to keep that string going of, of bringing women through the channel. So, Yeah, absolutely. And I think going forward, it would also be even how we recruit, um, you know, as well, identify those transferable skills. You are actually, you know, trained and educated in finance, uh, but, you know, and you've moved to technology. Yeah, and, and I think there's, there's room for all sorts of backgrounds within the technology field. You know, if you're a teacher, that doesn't mean that you, you or you have a teaching degree doesn't mean that you need to be a teacher. You could be uh, an educator in technology, giving uh, an example or demos to customers. You could help associates, you know, learn and be educated on sales motions. There's so much that is transferable skills from various backgrounds that people are studying that it doesn't mean that you have to go down one specific path. The, the career opportunities are endless, especially with a giant company like Ingram. Yes, absolutely. So being a woman in technology, what would you say is the best thing about working in this industry? To a woman outside, why should she consider a career here? So for me, I think that women are endlessly curious, right? They want to know why and they want to know what's next and why technology is because it's constantly changing so the why of some of why something is the way that it is today is not going to be the same thing that you're talking about tomorrow so there's an endless opportunity to learn and be educated so i i feel like women are always very um curious right they're always questioning and want to understand and this will always keep that mind going Technology is, yeah. is ever changing. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah. And it's fast paced. I mean, we as women, we don't like to sit still, right? You get us home, especially I don't know about anyone else during the pandemic, but you can't just sit at your computer all day. All of a sudden you realize, well, you're also doing a load of laundry and then you're cleaning something else while you're on a call and you're prepping dinner and you're constantly multitasking. And that's a skill that women have always excelled at is being able to multitask. And technology gives you the opportunity to do that all day long. Yes, absolutely. And, and I love the pace of this industry, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, me too. Yes. So, Cheryl, you are an inspiration to many women. But who inspires you or has inspired you in the past? I know you spoke of uh, mentorships and mentors you've worked with. Oh, there's there's so many. I mean, within the Ingram walls, I I mentor with a few women, uh, Jen and Aya, who I believe was on here as well as Sabine Howest, Sandy May and Daniela Rosa, who leads our um, Latin America division. 
But even externally, you know, I think that there are more and more women entrepreneurs out there and getting to hear them and their stories of how they took a small idea and transformed it into a company is really inspiring. So I know we, um, Jessica Alba is a great example. She is one of the, the women that I follow and I knew her as an actress. But what she did is when she became a mother, she realized that there was an opportunity to get more organic um, uh, um, diapers and baby line out there. And she created a whole brand around Honest that's now carried at many big distributors. And you would never know that it's her, but it cre- she saw a need in the industry and, and found a way to fill it. So I think just women like that being, being more entrepreneurial has been a, a big inspiration to me to have that mindset. Fantastic. And what advice would you give to women who want to be part of the technology industry? How how can they go about it in terms of, you know, any training or taking those first steps? Well, first, I would say just take the step, because a lot of times we overthink things. Women um, are less confident right in those decisions and want to make sure that we check all the boxes and Part of my advice would be, don't worry about it. You don't need to check every box. Just give it a try. And you can always change. And if you're going to fail, you fail fast and recognize what you liked and what you didn't like and keep moving. I mean, I don't think that anyone needs to be stuck in one role for the rest of their lives unless you choose that choose to be that way. Um, so as far as education, though, I mean, communication is always going to be huge. Make sure that you're reading. You're constantly learning. Uh, There's some great websites out there, some great articles, blogs that you can find information on. And now my new favorite being podcasts, because it's a nice way to get some quick tech information uh, in a short, easy to consume fashion. Yes, I agree. And you can you can listen to podcasts, whether you're driving or, you know, you're doing jobs around the house. It just kind of blends in nicely into your routine, doesn't it? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we are seeking to do, to educate and inspire women to be part of this industry, aren't we? We are. And and there's so much opportunity. And I think that there's a real need. You know, we need to keep getting balanced and bringing more people and, and women, especially into different leadership roles. And I think that there's an opportunity for everyone to be in there if you if that's what you desire. Absolutely. So how do you think men could be allies then in, in this whole conversation? Yeah, you know, I've been extremely fortunate within uh, the Ingram walls and the IBM walls that I work with very closely along with some of the other vendors to always feel supported by the men that are around me. Um, I think that they recognize that you can bring a different skill to the group and a different perspective that they might not be thinking. So uh, my encouragement to men would be to keep doing that, right? Keep asking for a different opinion from a woman um, because they will see things a little bit differently than another person that's just like you. And I think that 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 can go a long way in in having a more well-rounded strategy or a well-rounded approach to a conversation even because we can just look at it through a different lens. And I would say the same goes for women to make sure that you're also leveraging your male counterparts to give you that same opinion and together we can find ways to communicate even better. Absolutely. Taking them along on the same journey as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Don't be afraid. Absolutely. (laughs) So Cheryl, if you could time travel, what advice would you give to your younger self? I would want to make sure that I was never afraid to communicate what I was looking for in my career. And I think I developed that a little bit later, you know, and I still was able to move very quickly um, within the organization, but making sure that I was being vocal and helping others around me with that same uh, structured approach will just make it a lot clearer. You know, you don't have to do a lot of sidestepping or, um, you know, standing on the sidelines, but taking the opportunity to learn and then be vocal around what you want to do and and confident that you can do it, then that'll just make it go a little bit faster even. Is there something else we as an industry could do to kind of invite more talent from outside? 
Yeah, I think we need to keep engaging um, earlier and earlier. So younger and younger in schools before they we do a good job, I think, at the college level, you know, starting to get in front of universities. But as an industry, I think we got to get into middle schools, elementary schools and really start talking about what the career opportunities look like in technology to get to them a little bit sooner. Because that, that way, once they start to get into high school, or they start to get into college, they realize that that's an option. And I think a lot of times we just didn't even know that that was an option. You know, I mean, I didn't really think about technology as a business until I was in it. And that kind of fell, you know, through a, an internship. But if it if it hadn't been for that, I don't know that my path would have gone this way. So I think the more that you can get to kids younger and talk about technology careers will be building that future generation of people coming into the workforce. I absolutely agree because education is a key piece here because if you don't even know that opportunity exists, how do you even consider it? Exactly. Yep, it's so true. Well, Cheryl, it's been a great pleasure to have you on this podcast. Thank you for joining me today. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. This has been awesome and I look forward to seeing more and more from your podcast series come out. I look forward to that as well. And thank you to everyone for listening. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for listening to this special series, Coffee with Women in Tech from B2B Tech Talk with Ingram Micro. This was hosted by Harpreet Narang. Tune in again to listen to another great story. To not miss an episode, subscribe today in your favorite podcast platform.